What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another tutorial in which we create a cross-platform logger that can log different colors. We need to begin by creating a new file and I call that schnitzellib.h. The name is because in chat we voted for the engine name and that's why it's called schnitzel. So it's not my fault, it's actually chat's fault. The first thing we add in is a pragma once and then we need to include stdio.h. We're going to use this in order to right to the console. Then I yoink one of my sections. We start with defines in here. For now, we're going to leave it empty, but we will use that in a second. Then the next one, the next section we do is for logging. We begin by writing a void log function, underscore log. The reason I put the underscore here is because I don't want it to be invoked directly. If you want to use it, then you can, but uh, I want to signal that this is not supposed to be used directly. That's why the underscore. And then we start off with a character pointer with a prefix and a character pointer for the message. And then we need a color for the text. Text color, text color. And on top of that, we also want to supply variadic arguments because sometimes we might want to write some debug code and then we need to supply variables and stuff like that. So I want to add in arcs dot 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 arcs and for that we need a template type name dot 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 arcs the only thing missing is the enum text color and i've already written that and so i'm not going to write that again this enum holds text color for black red green yellow blue magenta and these are basically all the colors that you can set on windows and you can combine them if you want to and so i just wrote those down and put them in an enum and then we have a count for them at the very end. So to quickly explain how this works, uh, you can change the color by specifying a handle like this. It's basically text, but this changes the color to black. It's like an open brace and then it says uh, uh, everything after this is black. And then we add in the message in between. And then in order to close it, we have to specify this string. And so in order to have a list of these different things, cause uh, 30 is just black, but you can also have 31, which would be red. I made a static char pointer, text color table. And this is where we use the count, the text color count. And then we assign these different values. Okay, these are all the codes copied in. And you can see that 31 is red, 32 is green, and so on and so forth. They all coincide with the enum. So if you want to use black and you change this order here, then the colors will be wrong. It's not perfect. But uh, that's uh, how we do it. You could also assign it a little bit differently, but that's how I do it. And you usually won't change this, right? Next, we need to specify a format buffer. The reason why we need to do that is because we have variadic arguments and we want to fill these variadic arguments in after we have filled in the prefix. And the prefix is needed later on when we write in, for example, we write in something like this. We define SM trace. Uh, you know, it takes in a message and some variadic arguments. And then we want to call the log function, of course, with a prefix. And this prefix would be trace colon, for example, right? And then after that, we put a comma and we supply the message. And then the underscore underscore VA underscore arcs underscore underscore. Now, this is what you would usually do on Windows, but on Linux, apparently, you also have to specify these hashtags. And so this is what it would look like. It works on Windows and on Linux. And as far as I know, it also works on Mac. And so if we want to do this, then we need a format buffer, which basically puts the trace into our message. And so yeah, I basically put one here on the stack, which is 8192 big and we initialize that to zero. And then I just call sprintf into the format buffer using a format string, which is the first percentage s uses the color change. The second percentage s is the prefix. And the third percentage s is the message. And then after that, we close the handle by putting in the backslash 0330m. Because we want to undo the color change. Otherwise, if we write one trace message, and then uh, it will always be that color. And so, yeah, the dot 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 will be filled in by the text color table on text color, and then the prefix, and then the message. And then now we have the message in here. We also need to supply the variadic arguments, which is why we need a second buffer, which is actually the text buffer. I will put it in the same size. And then we create uh, another sprint f, and we uh, put that obviously in the text buffer. And as a format string, we use the format buffer, and then we supply the vari variadic arguments. And then after that, we just put the contents of the text buffer into the console. And so yeah, now we can actually work on our trace warning 
for example, and error messages. And we already have most of it done. I just forgot the after the message. We also want to supply the text color. For example, this is text color green, no, not bright green, but green. Then we have text color yellow for warnings and text color red for errors. At this point, I want to quickly check if it works. Might have done a mistake. So we need to include our header file, which is which is the schnitzel lib. And I just noticed that I accidentally created the schnitzel lib in the main root folder. We need to put it in source, of course. So yeah, I want to move it there. And then we can already test if it works. In our update loop, we can do an SM trace with a message. Let's say test. Let's do a trace warning and an error. If we run our program right now, nothing shows here, but in the terminal, oh, we already see. Yeah, works, cool. That works, and I just noticed all of them have trace. Obviously, instead of trace, I want to have one and error. Okay, now that it works, we also want to have assertions. We want to specify an assertion in some line and then have it on a condition. Maybe hold the program to show us, hey, there's a problem here. And so in order to do that, we want to define an SM assert. We want to assert on a condition and then we also want to type in a message and we want to have the very arguments like we had before and over here if we want to have i want to put it in different lines we need to specify a backslash so we can continue the macro on the next line otherwise we have to put it all in one line and i hate that I, I hate it so we don't do that we open up a brace and we don't forget the backslash then we do an if check on the x condition if we do not match that condition then we want to put in an SM error with the message and the varied arguments, which we have to supply like this, underscore, underscore, VA args. Then also, we not only want to show an error here, we also want to hold the program. In Windows, you would use debug break like this, but it doesn't work on every platform. And this is where the defines come in. We just want to call a generic debug break. So the final define should look something like this. We have an assertion on a condition with a message. If the condition is not true, then we throw an error and we debug break. And this debug break is something we have to define now. And it is different on every platform. So we have to do another if check here. If we are on Win32 and if. So on Win32, we want to define the debug break as underscore underscore debug break. And I'm also going to fill in the Linux and Mac one. So on Windows, we have debug break. On Linux, uh, it is built-in debug trap, but I also heard that it's working with debug trap or built-in trap, uh, which we have on Apple, on Mac. And so yeah, these are the ones that should happen on every single platform. And uh, we need to call it like this here. Otherwise, we run into problems. And so we could actually test if that works already. Building seems to work. And then in the main file, after we do the tests, we do an SM assert. Let's say false, and then we do a assertion not hit. Building that works too. And if we start now, since we, and I want to make sure that you have that uh, specified here, because in the other tutorial you might have looked in the footage that we don't have that anymore. Make sure that in the build.sh file, you have the minus G parameter specified, because that will create debug symbols for us. And so if we run now, yeah, it holds the program on running, which is one past assertion, which is down here. So it's the top of the running running loop. So if you want this to be on the exact line where the assertion is, you can put an SM error assertion it below the debug break because the debug break seems to uh, show the next line. If we put it in here, then it shows us the exact line, which I think is better. So we're going to do it like this. Okay, and this is how you can do a logger that is cross-platform in how many lines of code? Like 60, 70, 80 lines of code? Not that much. We now have assertions. We can log information to the console. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Until then, have a great day, everyone. Peace.